Hey guys, it's Owen from Wrestling Inc. back with another wrestling news roundup. Without any further ado, let's get into today's biggest stories in the world of professional wrestling. Backstage news on who appointed Stephanie McMahon as WWE's interim CEO and chairwoman. The decision to name Stephanie McMahon as WWE's interim CEO and chairwoman was reportedly made by a special committee comprising of eight members of WWE's board of directors. According to Dave Meltzer in the latest Wrestling Observer newsletter, the four board members who were not involved in the decision-making process were Stephanie, Nick Khan, Vince McMahon and Paul Triple H Lebeck. The report added that although it was Vince's decision to step down from his corporate duties, he recused himself from the process of naming his interim successor. The eight board members who elected Stephanie are Steve Coonan, the CEO of the Atlanta Hawks and State Farm Arena in Atlanta, Ignace Lahoud, the CEO of Mahid Al Futum, Erica Nardini, the CEO of Barstool Sports, Steve Pammon, the president of Vazuz, Connor Shaw, and founder and CEO of Words Plus Pictures, Jeffrey Speed, the former executive vice president and CFO of Six Flags Inc., and Alan Wexler, the senior vice president of innovations and growth for General Motors. Shortly after Stephanie took a leave of absence last month, Meltzer reported that certain higher-ups in the WWE wanted to bury her on the way out, echoing a report from Business Week which noted that several top-ranked officials felt the company was, quote, underperforming in ad revenue with Stephanie as the chief brand officer. The report also claimed that it was not Stephanie's idea to leave, but it was Vince who made the decision for her to step away, citing the lack of new sponsorships under her watch. Interestingly, Meltzer reported Friday that none of the eight board members who put Stephanie in power were involved in the process of quote burying her behind the scenes, which would indicate that they are firm supporters of Stephanie. According to Fightful Select, a lot of the talents backstage are related about Stephanie being put in charge. One top star told the publication that it effing rules that Stephanie is their boss, albeit in an interim capacity. Less than a week after Stephanie took over the reins, her husband, Triple H, returned to WWE performance center to assume his backstage responsibilities which he had stepped away from following his cardiac event last year. Upon returning to the WWE earlier this year, Triple H's duties were reportedly drastically different than prior to his absence. Earlier this week, however, Triple H emphatically said, quote, I'm back while addressing talents at the WWE PC, which would indicate that he's back to a prominent position in NXT. New Japan Pro Wrestling star pulled from AEW New Japan Pro Wrestling Forbidden Door due to injury. Another star will be missing this Sunday's AEW New Japan Pro Wrestling Forbidden Door event. New Japan Pro Wrestling announced on Thursday that New Japan Pro Wrestling star Tomohiro Ishii has sustained a left knee injury and is not medically cleared to compete at Forbidden Door on June 26. Clark Connors will be taking Ishii's place in the AEW All-Atlantic Championship 4-way match at Forbidden Door. The new match is now Connors vs Pac vs Malachi Black vs Miro. New Japan Pro Wrestling released the following statement, quote, Thank you for supporting New Japan Pro Wrestling. Tomohiro Ishii, who was scheduled to compete on June 26 at Forbidden Door, has sustained a left knee injury and is not medically cleared to compete. We apologize to fans who were looking forward to seeing Ishii wrestle and appreciate your understanding. After a hard-fought qualifying match at Kurokun Hall on June 21, Clark Connors will take Ishii's place in the All-Atlantic Championship 4-way at Forbidden Door. As noted, AEW has been dealing with a slew of injuries before the Forbidden Door pay-per-view. Brian Danielson and CM Punk are just two AEW wrestlers who are currently injured and will be missing the event on Sunday. Two more law firms investigating WWE Following news of five different law firms investigating WWE, two more have now announced they'll be looking into WWE's handling of fiduciary responsibilities to investors in the build-up to and fallout from a bombshell report from the Wall Street Journal detailing an investigation by WWE's own board of directors into hush money payments made by Chairman and CEO Vince McMahon. The news has had a dramatic effect on WWE stock price, leading to the investigations on behalf of long-term WWE shareholders 
shareholders who feel the company's actions were not in the best interest of investors. Like the five other companies, Pomerantz Law Firm and More Cool PLLC will both look into whether WWE breached their fiduciary duties to shareholders, committed securities fraud, or engaged in other unlawful business practices. If proper evidence is found in the investigation, a class action lawsuit could be formed on behalf of investors, but no investigation has been officially designated as class as of this recording. An investigation into a January 2022 non-disclosure agreement between McMahon and a former WWE paralegal led to the discovery of numerous NDAs between McMahon and former female employees alleging misconduct. WWE Head of Talent Relations John Laurinaitis was also named in the WWE Board's investigation. McMahon has since stepped down from his corporate duties while maintaining control over the company's creative direction. Laurinaitis has been placed on administrative leave. Since news of the investigations broke, McMahon has made appearances on both SmackDown and Raw. The 76-year-old executive did not address any allegations or the investigations on screen or backstage where he was said to be in a jovial mood despite the situation. Backstage news on Ric Flair's last match. Since the announcement that Ric Flair would be having his latest retirement match at the StarCast 5 Fan Fest, it's been reported that Flair would be teaming with FTR against the Rock and Roll Express and another partner who was originally planned to be Ricky the Dragon Steamboat. Steamboat has since declined to be a part of the match and now it may be fair to ask if FTR is involved as well. A new report from Fightful Select Thursday afternoon revealed that AEW owner and CEO Tony Khan has yet to give clearance to Cash Wheeler and Dax Harwood to work Flair's retirement match. As such, their participation in the match, scheduled to take place on July 31st in the Nashville Municipal Auditorium, remains up in the air. No reason was given as to why Khan hadn't granted FTR clearance to work the event. Earlier this year, Flair's former podcast co-host Mark Madden hinted Flair and Khan had a falling out after Dark Side of the Ring's controversial episode on the plane ride from Hell and Flair's conduct on the flight. Madden further claimed that Khan disinvited Flair from his birthday party this year. It's unknown if the supposed rift between Khan and Flair is related to this situation. It should be noted that Flair has also hinted a friction with another AEW star, Jay Lethal. Lethal had been helping Flair prepare for his in-ring return, but according to Flair, tension developed between the two after Lethal found out he would not be participating in the show. Fightful also added some more context regarding Steamboat's decision not to participate in Flair's final match, citing the main reason as Steamboat's asking price being, quote, extremely high according to sources. Fightful noted, however, that Steamboat was willing to do the match and did have a meeting regarding his potential participation. Ultimately, however, the two sides were unable to agree on a deal. Flair's retirement match will cap off an eventful StarCast weekend, largely built around the Nature Boy, who will also be the subject of a roast and a reunion of the Four Horsemen. As noted, the event will now take place at the Nashville Municipal Auditorium, the site of Flair and Steamboat's legendary 1989 Wrestle War match. The show was originally scheduled to take place at the Nashville Fairgrounds. So what are your thoughts on today's wrestling news roundup? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Be sure to like and subscribe to Wrestling Inc. And I'll speak to you again very, very soon.